I know that you're excited about an incredible evening, and uh, we want to welcome you here uh, to the hangar here at First Baptist Church Spartanburg. Uh, before I lead us in prayer and officially start the evening, I do want to say just a, a few things, a few uh, words. Um, uh, special thanks to all of the vendors who are here tonight uh, in the concourse. I know that many of you were able to take advantage of that and go by and, and uh, peruse a lot of, of what they have brought tonight. I do want you to know that they are going to be available tonight after the event is over and uh, really will be here as long as folks are here. Um, and, and so just keep that in mind, if you will, that uh, they'll be available. Also, at the end of the night, uh, we do have an autograph session uh, with our special guest. And just to give you a heads up, the way that's going to work is uh, we will not be exiting out those doors uh, at the end of the program, we'll actually be coming down and going out these doors. So everybody tonight at the end of the program, we will all be exiting out uh, these doors uh, just to help with the traffic flow uh, to make it up to do the autographs. So I hope you'll understand as a crowd this size, uh, this is without question the largest event that we've ever hosted here. And uh, we're just uh, especially excited. I'm so thankful for Kristen Butler. Uh, she directs our girls' ministries here at First Baptist Spartanburg. And for those of you who do not have girls' ministry programs in your church or you would like more information, uh, she does have some contact information uh, to be a resource for you and your church at some point down the road. If she can be a help to you, I know that she'd love that opportunity. And she was up here a while ago doing uh, some of the giveaways. But uh, all the folks who've been here tonight, the vendors, uh, we appreciate them. A special thanks uh, to uh, Carolina Pregnancy Center, uh, Alexa Newman, the director for CPC, uh, such a servant in our community, and uh, we appreciate her support and help tonight. And then Christian Supply. Chuck Wallington and his staff have been incredible in helping really to bring the spearhead behind this event tonight. And uh, we especially appreciate Chuck, your, you and your team. And um, uh, we're excited about what God is about to do in this place. And uh, so I know that there's a lot of things that uh, you're looking forward to. I'm going to lead us in prayer, and then I'm going to introduce uh, the MC. Uh, for tonight. Father, we do thank you for tonight and for the opportunity to gather. Lord, I know that uh, uh, there are lots of thoughts swirling through the minds and hearts of each person here. Um, Lord, I do pray that, that your spirit would be sensed and felt here. Lord, that we would understand what beauty is in your eyes. Lord, that our perspectives would change tonight according to your will and to your way. I thank you, Father, for those who sacrificed to make tonight possible. And for all those who uh, crammed girls in their minivans and, and buses to bring them this way, Lord, I pray that the discussion that takes place on the way home would make tonight forever a marker, a spiritual marker in their life. We pray all this in the strong and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. To MC the next part uh, of our evening, uh, we're blessed to have two special guests with us. I know one was actually on her way here, so I'm not sure if she's here yet. Uh, we have uh, Miss Teen South Carolina, Sydney Seal. And, uh, but to start us off tonight, until Sydney comes to join her, uh, will you please welcome to the stage our host for the evening, uh, Miss South Carolina 2012, Miss Allie Rogers. Hey girls, how's everybody doing? Good? I can hardly see y'all in the back. Y'all give me a wave. All right. All right, we're going to get, hey girls, we're going to get this started off with a fashion show. Um, I love cute clothes, and I'm excited to see what these girls have, and so I'm going to introduce them. So let's get started. I think we need some music. I'm just saying. Here we have Kimberly Gilbert, who is a junior at Chapman High School. She is a wonderful cheerleader, dancer, and tumbler. She loves traveling and reading in her spare time, but most of all, loves spending time with her friends. Tonight, she is wearing a beautiful outfit from Two Doors Down. Let's hear it for Kimberly.
Teal's Dance Company is where you will find Reagan Ort most of her spare time. She loves ballet, jazz, modern, and musical theater dance. When not dancing, she's reading, crafting, or attending Burns High School where she is a freshman. Reagan is sporting a trendy little number from Oops Company. Let's give it up for Reagan. The beautiful Maggie Gossett is up next. She is a sophomore at Broome High School, enjoys singing, swimming with her family in the summer, and playing soccer. But spending time with her discipleship girls is at the top of her list. This adorable outfit can also be found at Two, two Doors Down. Let's hear it from Maggie. Sarah Green is gearing up for her senior year at Boiling Springs High School. Sarah enjoys being a student trainer, listening to music, and going to the movies with her friends. She found this great outfit at Three Sisters, and wouldn't it be great to go see a movie with friends in? That's when you nudge your mom and like, mom, yo, see it? The lovely Grace Renfro is up next. She's wearing an adorable outfit from Almost Pink. When she's not shopping at Almost Pink, she's spending time with her family and discipleship group and probably wearing pink too. Let's hear it for Grace. Next, we have Gracie Breed, who will be walking across the stage at Dorman in just a few days as she graduates from high school. She is modeling a great outfit from Three Sisters. I think this will be the perfect outfit for under her graduation gown. Let's hear it for Gracie. Next, we have Miriam Rimfro who is in the eighth grade at McCracken Junior High School. She enjoys horseback riding and cheering, but she really loves fashion, and it definitely shows with this great summer outfit from the Lemon Peel. Let's hear it from Miriam. Okay, well, the fun part about fashion shows and, and stuff like Miss America, and you gotta change clothes really, really fast. So they're backstage right now, now changing. Uh, I can think back to being at Miss America. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I didn't grow up wanting to be Miss America. I don't really like pageants, so running back and forth, thank goodness it was just girls there. I promise it was just girls backstage, but it was a madhouse. And so they're getting ready frantically right now. Um, I don't think we're going to see any swimsuits. I don't think we're going to see any evening gowns or anything, but you never know. Hey, it's, it's summertime, right? I think we have our next girl, and it's Kimberly Gilbert. This cute little number she's wearing can be found at Almost Pink. Almost Pink is located on Henry Street, just down from the delicious sugar and spice. Kimberly sure does look ready for summer, doesn't she? Next, we have Reagan again and she is wearing an adorable ensemble from Oops Company. Oops is located on East Main Street, just down from Converse College. They have many other great outfits, just like this one, and Reagan is doing a wonderful job at modeling them for us. Let's hear it for Reagan. I'm digging the pants. Can y'all tell I like pants? Next is Maggie, back with us again, wearing another adorable outfit from Two Doors Down. Two Doors Down is located on Main Street, right in the heart of downtown. They have lots of beautiful pieces to get you ready for summer right now. Nudge your mom one more time. Let's hear it from Maggie. Next, Sarah is showing off a great summer outfit from Oops. It would be perfect for that trip to the beach or fun outing with friends. You can find lots of other great beach accessories at Oops Company that are must-haves and will fit perfectly with the outfits. Let's hear it for Sarah. Almost Pink is back, worn by the cute Grace Renfro. Grace loves to attend Clemson football games. Go Tigers! and is always looking for cute outfits like this one to wear to the games. I'm sure you can find lots of great game wear at Almost Pink. Let's hear it for Grace. <laughs> the
Next we have Gracie, who looks ready for college in this great outfit from Three Sisters. Three Sisters is located right here on Main Street and is celebrating their 10th anniversary this year. So maybe they'll have some good deals. How about that? Let's hear it for Gracie. And last but certainly not least, take a look at the great outfit from the Lemon Pill. Miriam is wearing it so well. The Lemon Pill is located only a short jump across the street right here on Dunbar Street. Let's hear it for Miriam and let's invite all the girls back to the stage. All right, girls, y'all come strut your stuff. Let's give a round of applause for all of our models. Okay, now pose, pose, now turn. Work it, work it. Thank you, girls. And I will see y'all soon. Thank you, ladies. You know, in preparation for tonight, one of the things that uh, we prayed about as a group uh, we felt like it was important for, for you to hear from a guy. And uh, what do guys look for? Now, I'm 48, so you're probably not really interested <laughs> in hearing what I have to say about, you know. Um, but, you know, my wife and I, she's here tonight, Robin's here. We have four boys, and, uh, and they're all uh, 13 years of age or up. And uh, I think sometimes there may be this thing of what do girls really look for, what do guys really look for. Maybe there's a dispute on what that really is. And so um, we prayed about it, and there was one particular guy that, that I really felt like could represent uh, the kind of guy that I believe girls should be looking for. And, uh, and for you to know that there are guys like this out there. Uh, this young man is a, a recent college graduate. Um, he was an all-state um, golf uh, athlete. I mean, it, uh, just incredibly decorated. Um, and so there's a lot of folks that, that uh, knew his name. And they went on to play with a full scholarship in, in college at University of South Carolina. And, um, and I think the words that you'll hear... It may surprise some of you to know that there are guys who think this way. And, and I want you to know that there are a lot of them out there. And I want you to listen closely to the words. This video is about five minutes, but I can promise you it may be some of the most powerful words that you'll hear from a guy, Clint Tollison. When I'm thinking about a girl trying to uh, go through the dating process, figure out you know what kind of girl do I want to date, do I want to spend all my time with, obviously your attraction is going to be the first thing that, that stems your thoughts. But it's so much more than that. For most guys out there, I think anybody would say that attraction is going to be a, a fleeting thought. It's something that's going to spark your interest for a couple minutes, but then it's, it's eventually just so shallow that it's not going to be the ultimate decision maker for you deciding who you want to be with, who you want to date, and eventually marry. For me, it was uh, all about competition for me. My whole life was about competition. What does a girl bring to the table that's going to make me better as a person? So, sure, I need to be attracted to them, but are they going to challenge me in my walk spiritually? Are they going to challenge me in uh, the aspects of life that I want to be successful in? What, are, what is it that separates that girl from the rest of the girls that makes me say I, I have to spend time with her because she's going to make me a better person. So thinking back to high school, you know, for me it was only five years ago so it's easy to still relate with those uh, thoughts and those feelings because I just had them. Um, thinking back to, to the guys in high school, the different types there were, you know, there are those guys out there that are, that are after girls just to put another number uh, on the amount of girls that they've been with. And, that's just not what it's about. You know, if you're looking for a truly respectful gentleman, you know, he's going to respect your thoughts, your values, your morals way more than he's going to be concerned with any kind of physical uh, situation that you guys might be involved in. So for all the girls out there, I just challenge you, if, if you're in a position that could be compromising, if you're in an area that you don't feel comfortable, 
just walk away from it. Have enough respect for yourself and uh, the respect for the person that you're going to be with in the future to say, hey, this is, this is not what it's about because there are plenty of high school guys out there that are in it to you know, glorify God in their relationship. They're going to be respectful to you and they're going to be way more concerned with, are you comfortable? Are you, you know, feeling comfortable with the relationship than they are going to be with any kind of physical thing that might be going on. So if you're in an area that's compromising physically or compromising emotionally, I would encourage you to look elsewhere out there because there are plenty of guys that are out there trying to be respectful gentlemen and really respect who you are as a person. If I could talk to the, to the girls about physical looks and you know what you're wearing, you know, it's, it goes so much deeper than that. Sure, you're gonna catch a guy's attention for a second, but that's all it's gonna be. It's gonna be a second, and they're probably gonna say some things about you that you probably don't want them to say about you in the first place. So uh, just really pay attention to the whole uh, projection of how you're projecting yourself, because if there's a guy out there that's looking for a, respect, a respectful relationship, and trying to honor the girl that they're with, that's almost gonna be a turn off in more ways than it's a turn on because they're just thinking, man, that she's beautiful, that's great, but I would never wanna be with somebody like that because now I'm having to worry about all these other guys and everything that she's, what, what is she really saying by doing those things? So uh, for me personally, I have to be attracted, you have to be attracted to the person you're gonna be with, but that is the absolute surface of it. It, it goes so much deeper than that, and you have to get into the person themselves, their personality, their morals. What do they enjoy doing? It's so much more than how they look on the outside. So girls, if I could just challenge you in what to look for in a guy, what to biblically look for in the guy that you're trying to be with, you know, there's certain things that just have to be there. He's got to respect you. You know, if you've got a guy that's not opening the door for you, something as simple as that, if you've got a guy that's not, you know, going the extra mile to make you feel special, you know, he's most likely just interested in the physical. He's not interested in nurturing you as a person. If you've got a guy that's uh, making you compromise physically, if he keeps urging you, hey, let's do this, let's, let's try to, you know, push the, push the barrier here, push our line here, uh, I encourage you that that's not the situation you need to be a part of because in the long run, he's not interested in you. He's interested in f fulfilling a selfish desire that he has. So just a real challenge to you girls to, Never put yourself in a compromising situation because if you are, that's most likely a guy that's not interested in who you are as a person. That's a guy that's interested in what your body has to offer. And that's just going to be a temporary satisfaction for him and he's going to move on. So I would encourage you girls to be committed and respectful enough to yourself to have certain expectations that you place on a man that's going to be pursuing you. Because that, his, his, that is his job is to pursue you. If he's not pursuing you, if you're having to do all the work in the relationship, uh, again, I would just challenge that, that guy in your relationship because I don't think he's being the man that God's called him to be and the man that you deserve. So uh, really just be analytical and very uh, have very high standards when you're looking for a guy because he should meet all of them. Please welcome back to the stage Miss Allie Rogers. And Miss Teen South Carolina, Sydney Seal. Welcome back. I have someone that I would like to introduce. Um, the best part of being Miss South Carolina is having a sister queen uh, to serve alongside. And Sydney Seal has been an incredible role model uh, for young girls and even for me as a 21-year-old. And I'm so proud of all she has done uh, representing the state of South Carolina, especially for young girls. I'm going to let her say a few words while she's here. Well, hello. How is everyone doing tonight? That was kind of weak. Y'all aren't doing that good? <laughs> good. I'm glad to hear that. Well, I just wanted to let you know something that um, some of you may or may not know, but that is that every single one of you is beautiful. So I want you to look to your neighbor, both right and left, and say, you are beautiful. <laughs> All right, great. Okay, and I want you to realize that 
you're beautiful not because of the appearance on the outside, but from within, and you're beautiful because God made you that way. And I wanna make sure that everyone remembers that. And I'm so thankful to be here, and I'm so glad to be a part of tonight and making everyone realize that they're beautiful from within. Thank you, Sydney. We live in a world that tells us we're not good enough. We're not skinny enough. We're not pretty enough. Our hair is not long enough. And to be honest, I don't care that my hair is not long enough anymore. I cut it all off, if y'all haven't noticed. And I've come to realize, especially in being Miss South Carolina, when a focus is on beauty and a focus is on your appearance and your physical being, what I've come to realize is that it doesn't matter. It does not matter at all. And, and a passage of scripture, I think I may have shared it with this, this group when I was back here at Spartanburg First Baptist last year or a few months ago sometime. Uh, in Romans chapter 12, it says, don't be conformed, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I challenge you all to take that passage of scripture, Romans chapter 12, and read it and really try to embrace it. See how those words can relate to your life, to your experiences, to your journey uh, as a believer. Wherever you may be in your walk with Christ, I want to challenge you with those words. Um, because what it comes down to is whether we are being a good representation of God because he doesn't care what we look like or he would have made us all to look exactly alike and that'd be pretty boring, would it not? I have someone really cool that I'm going to introduce to y'all. Um, I know y'all have all been excited to meet her and to hear from her and to hear her story. She is truly an incredible role model, um, and I got to talk to her a little bit back there. She has been literally all over the past few days since her book came out, uh, and is just an incredible role model for young girls, for 21-year-olds for moms used to be 21-year-olds. Uh, so I, I'm just happy that she's able to be here to share her story with you all uh, and how she is being such uh, a testament to what a Christian woman should be. Kylie Basuti was just 19 years old when she beat out more than 10,000 other contestants to win the coveted title of Victoria's Secret Run Runway Angel as part of a nationally televised competition that captivated the attention of millions of viewers across the country and across the world. Shortly thereafter, Kylie shocked both fans and critics when she made the controversial decision to walk away from her, her high-profile, multi-million dollar career because she wouldn't reconcile modeling lingerie with her Christian beliefs. Kylie now lives in, in northern Montana with her husband, Mike. She is truly an inspiration to all of us, and I'm excited to hear her story for the first time and for us to get to know her a little better. So help me welcome Kylie. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that introduction. <laughs> wow, oh my goodness, there are so many of you. And you're so beautiful. <laughs> okay, this is a little too close to my mouth, I think. Does that sound better? Okay. All right, so um, I don't know how many of you guys know my story uh, or how many of you had read my book yet, but I'm gonna share a little bit of my story tonight. Um, and I'm going to go all the way back to when I was about your guys' age. Uh, I'm 23 now, but when I was uh, in middle school, um, I had a very different definition of beauty than I do now. Um, I used to want to uh, feel beautiful so bad. Uh, I always used to ask myself, am I beautiful? Uh, just like the name of our event tonight. Uh, how many of you guys find yourself asking that same question like I was? Am I beautiful? Am I good enough? Am I worthy? Uh, are people going to accept me? Well, uh, let me go back. When I was your age, I used to think that to be beautiful, you had to be like the models that you see in magazines, like the celebrities that we see um, on TV and, uh, you know, all the models on the runways. Uh, I really felt that they had the definition of beauty 
They had money, they had fame, they had all of the attention. Um, tons of guys, you know, flocked after them. Um, they were beautiful. Uh, I thought that that's what I had to be to feel worthy, uh, to feel accepted. So when I was in middle school, I used to get teased a lot about my weight. I used to get called anorexic, bulimic. Um, I was constantly made fun of. So I had a big desire to be accepted, and I desperately wanted attention. So I got involved in modeling. Um, I thought that if I could get involved in modeling and become like the models that I had seen in catalogs, um, in the magazine ads, especially Victoria's Secret models. How many of you guys agree that you would think Victoria's Secret models pretty much have it made, um, that everybody thinks they're beautiful and they're just so happy and so confident? Um, well, I thought that when I was in high school and middle school. Um, so that was my dream. That was what I wanted to aspire to be. Um, and it was all because I just wanted to feel beautiful. Uh, so I got involved in modeling. Um, I traveled to Thailand, uh, Japan. Um, when I was 16, I moved to New York by myself. Uh, my parents let me go. Uh, it was kind of very crazy. Um, I was immediately thrown into a world full of eating disorders, drugs, alcohol, uh, sex, um, all sorts of crazy things that I had never, um, you know, been around before. It was an absolutely new world to me. And I talk a lot about all of the crazy experiences that I had in my book, I'm No Angel. Um, I'll get into a couple of them here, but we don't have enough time to go through everything. Um, but in New York, being 16, uh, I just wanted to make it. I wanted all of the kids back at school that teased me and made fun of me um, to know that I was worthy. Uh, I didn't deserve to be teased, so I was there on a mission, um, a mission to be valued. And so I was trying to do whatever it would take uh, in the world. I was very, very worldly. I was very selfish. Um, I wanted fame and attention so bad that I was willing to do anything to get it. Um, when I was young, I had a great relationship with my father, but as I got older, he started focusing more on money and his work and his success, and he started spending less time with me. So uh, I started looking to get attention um, in all the wrong places, uh, mainly from boys, um, and also from modeling. And so that is one of the things that drove me um, into the modeling industry was looking for attention and looking for that love that I wasn't receiving from my father. Um, I didn't look to Christ uh, as the person to give me that love. Uh, I was looking for that love in worldly places. And so as I pursued my modeling career in New York, um, it was absolutely crazy. Um, I had a roommate that was bulimic and would throw up every meal that she had. She would go to sleep every night crying um, because she felt that she was too heavy. Um, girls that were as young as 14 and 15 would be getting into black SUVs and taken away by older men to nightclubs where they would be given um, all sorts of food and drinks um, as long as they were there to look beautiful and promote the club. And um, I, when I was 16, um, wanted to make it so bad uh, that I just was willing to do whatever it took. So when I was 16 and my agency told me that um, you know, I needed to book jobs uh, in order to make it in the industry. Um, yet I wasn't going on very many castings, and I asked them why. Um, and let me, guy, let me show you guys uh, my body right now. Would you guys pretty much agree that I'm 
pretty thin right now. Okay, well, this is about the exact weight that I was when I was modeling in New York uh, when my agency called me a fat cow and a pig and told me that if I didn't drop the weight, um, I wouldn't be going on any castings anymore. And I needed to drop about 10 pounds. Um, I needed to lose two inches off of my hips, uh, inches off of my thighs, inch, a couple inches off of my waist, um, and then I would be good enough to go on the castings. And so I, desperate to make it work uh, and not have to go home to all of my friends at school, well, all the friends, the people that made fun of me, um, and show that I was a failure and that I wasn't beautiful enough, I wasn't worthy enough and good enough to make it as a model. Uh, I went to desperate measures to lose the weight. Um, I started doing crazy cleanses, um, eating very low calories a day, uh, just so that I could drop the weight. And I ended up getting down to about 108 pounds. Uh, and I'm five foot 10 and that's very, sorry, very, very sickly thin. Um, to this day, I have a lot of things, a lot of health problems that I now deal with because of um, the crazy things that I did when I was that age. Um, and it's, it's very sad, but it was what I was doing to try and gain beauty, to try and gain worth in this world. Um, so as I continued modeling, once I lost all the weight, I started booking jobs, just like my agency had told me. And so they were right. You did have to be extremely thin um, to be able to book jobs and make it in the industry. So I kept pursuing my modeling career. And the more jobs I booked, the more I got involved with everything, the more attention I got, the more I started craving to be a supermodel, the more I started craving that fame. Um, I don't know how many of you out here would love to be famous, um, who would just dream of, you know, being a supermodel maybe, or being a celebrity because you want to be famous. Uh, but I was that girl. I wanted to be famous so bad. Um, so I continued pursuing modeling. And Victoria's Secret became my biggest dream because I knew that that was the top of the modeling industry. Um, as I continued pursuing modeling, uh, I ended up meeting um, who is now my husband, uh, but his name was Mike. And I go into our love story and everything that happened there in my book. Um, I won't really talk about it here, but if you want to hear about my love story, you can read it. Um, he, he, I ended up marrying him when I was 19, and shortly after that I, is when I um, auditioned for the Victoria's Secret competition. Um, this had been my dream for so, so long, and so when I auditioned for the Victoria's Secret competition, um, I just so desperately wanted to make it to the top. Um, I felt that I had worked so hard in my modeling career I started when I was 14 and I was now 19. Um, I paid my dues in Japan and Thailand and um, dropped all the weight in New York and went through all of these crazy things. Uh, and so when I was 19 and auditioned for the Runway, uh, Runway Angel competition, um, I ended up advancing to the next level. Uh, and I was so, so happy because I thought, I could finally feel beautiful. I'm finally gonna get that acceptance that I've been looking for, all of this attention, all of this fame uh, that I've been desiring and craving. And so as I continued through the competition and made it further and further along, I could just grasp all of that fame and attention that I had been searching for. I thought, finally, I'm gonna feel, feel beautiful. Well, um, the night of the runway show came along. Uh, I made it through the competition um, up until the runway show, and this was like the final 
day where they would announce the winner. Um, I got backstage at the runway show and we had to arrive at about 8 a.m. Uh, and the show wasn't until 6 p.m. And I didn't realize that once we got there, all of that time would be spent putting on makeup and fake hair and airbrushing, spray tans, um, you name it. Everything for all those hours was spent making the models beautiful, making them into what you guys see in the catalogs, what I've been seeing in the catalogs. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I was, I was there and it was all so fake. Um, I didn't understand. I thought that I was finally going to get there and I was just going to be a beautiful model, but I didn't realize that it was going to take hours and hours and hours of fake things to get me there. Um, I mean, the table for hair extensions was longer than this stage here. Uh, a fake hair that goes into all of these models' heads. Um, right now I have no extensions and this is just my natural hair and you guys probably notice a big difference between me right now and if you've ever seen pictures of me in the runway show, my hair was like this um, because it was all fake. Um, tables upon tables of makeup and fake eyelashes. Um, a whole station where you go in and you strip down and they airbrush your body and take off any cellulite that you have, any scars, any stretch marks. They just airbrush it all away with their special machines and concoctions. It's, it's pretty crazy. I've, I've seen all those models naked. They don't look like that in the, <laughs> they don't look like that in the catalogs. Um, it's, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you girls don't know about to make the models beautiful, to make them into what you see and what you think you want to look like and what you feel like you have to look like to be considered beautiful. I know the pressures of the media and society and all of these images that you see, all of these images you see when you go to the malls and you see the pictures in the storefronts you're watching TV and you see all these celebrities. You're looking at magazines. You're on Facebook and you see all of these images of all of these celebrities and models and you think that's what beauty is. But I can tell you, it's completely fake. There's nothing real to it. It's all airbrush. It's all spray tans. It's all fake hair. It's all eyelash extensions. You can take the pressure off. You're never going to look like it. I don't even look like it, and I was it, <laughs> okay? I can't even live up to the images they made me look like because it's all fake. Um, the models can't live up to it. The celebrities can't live up to it. It's all an illusion. So that was my first experience of the runway show, which was supposed to be the best day of my life. Um, but I came to find out that it, it was just all an illusion. Um, when I finally met some of the models um, backstage um, and I was asking their advice on workout tips and stuff like that, uh, I was very surprised at some of their answers. One of the girls told me that she doesn't work out, she just has sex with her boyfriend all the time. Uh, I was very, very shocked that this is what I was hearing because I looked up to this model um, and that's the kind of role model she was to me. That's the kind of advice she was going to give to me, somebody that looked up to her. These were the types of people. This was the type of persona I was supposed to take on. Uh, I was just so, so shocked. Um, as the day went on before the show was about to start, um, all the models gathered around. We were all in our lingerie. There were cameramen everywhere filming everything, even us getting dressed. There was cameras, people taking pictures. Um, and then they brought out a bunch of alcohol. Sorry, alcohol reference for <laughs> those. I don't know if anybody watches Tim Hawkins in here, but 
I heard about coming to a Baptist church and making an alcohol reference from Tim Hawkins. <laughs> well, I was 19 at the time, and I was expected to drink the alcohol that they were giving me. They wanted to get us drunk before we went out on the runway show so that we, in my opinion, so that we would be more flirty, you know, blow more kisses, uh, be a little loopy on the runway. Um, I couldn't believe it. Once again, I was in shock. It was just incredible that this is what was happening behind the scenes. And this was the type of role model that I was going to be if I were to live this life. So I end up walking the runway that night. Um, I end up winning the entire competition. And the night of the um, party where it was announced that I had won the entire runway angel competition, uh, my dream, the thing I had been dreaming about my entire life, um, the thing that was supposed to bring me joy and happiness and beauty and self-worth and confidence and success and attention. Um, that night, right after they announced my winning, uh, a bunch of nude dancers came out. And my husband was there, and all of the Victoria's Secret models were there, and, you know, owners of Victoria's Secret, a uh, bunch of different people and a ton of new dancers came out to, I guess, congratulate us. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of weird, but um, a bunch of new dancers came out. And, of course, my husband leaves because he doesn't want to be around that. Um, but I'm stuck there. This is supposed to be my celebration night. And I guess I'm supposed to dance with new dancers. I don't know. Um, congratulations, you win. And here's your little, you know, naked women to celebrate with. <laughs> I didn't, I, I don't know. It's really weird. But um, that was my night of glory. Um, that ended up being the most insecure night of my life. Um, it was absolutely one of the worst nights of my life. Um, it was supposed to be, in my mind, what I thought, and probably what most of you would think, um, becoming a Victoria's Secret model would be like the best thing in the world and one of you know the most incredible nights of your life if you got to walk that runway. Well, it ended up being uh, the most insecure, uh, one of the worst nights of my life. Um, and I was just so shocked. But after that, I started getting so much attention. Um, I was like one of the most Googled people on the internet at the time. Uh, I started going to red carpet events with celebrities. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe if I just keep doing this a little bit longer, I'll finally feel beautiful. So I kept striving for this career to try and feel beautiful. Um, as I kept pursuing it, though, uh, and the more photo shoots I did, the more I saw the Photoshop that was taking place. Um, I would do a photo, shot, photo shoot, and my images would come back, and uh, I, I would be even thinner than I already was. Um, I would have more definition in my abs, and my boobs would be bigger. You, <laughs> There's a bunch of girls here, so I can say that. <laughs> if there were guys here, I probably wouldn't talk about that. But actually, it's probably a good thing for guys to know. Wives, it's probably a good thing for your husbands to know. They make all the models' boobs and butts bigger than they really are. I mean, <laughs> I know, ew, right? That's gross. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I would get these images back and it wouldn't even look like me. Uh, and so it would make me even more secure, insecure because I couldn't even live up to the own images that they were creating of me. Um, I always had to have my hair dyed. I always had to have my hair extensions in. I always had to have my spray tan on. Um, I had to live that persona and I was focusing so much attention on my outer appearance. Uh, to try and, and get that beauty that I was searching for, to try and get that attention. And 
I mean, my whole world just revolved around focusing on my outer, you know, appearance. So I just, I just could not believe that all of this Photoshop was taking place. Um, and it started just making me feel horrible because I started realizing that young girls look at these images and they think they have to live up to this. They think they have to become this to feel beautiful. Um, they think they have to go to Victoria's Secret and buy push-up bras because they want to look like the models. They think that they have to be thin like the models um, to feel beautiful. That's the kind of pressures that society and all of these images put on young girls. Uh, and I knew firsthand that these images weren't even attainable because they were photoshopping the models to make them even thinner. Um, even though the models were wearing push-up bras, they would still photoshop them and make them bigger. So the girls could never attain this fake beauty that I was promoting. And so slowly, God started changing my heart and opening up my eyes to all of these things. Um, one time I had my eight-year-old cousin come up to me and tell me that she wanted to start throwing up her food so that she could feel beautiful like me. Now she said that and it broke my heart. And the amazing thing is, is I didn't even feel beautiful. <laughs> she was looking at me and she thought that I had it all because I was a model, I was getting attention, I had all these images, all these magazines. Um, yet I was very, very, very insecure. What I can tell you is that the majority of models are extremely insecure and unhappy. Uh, that's why they always have their hair extensions in, they always have their fake eyelashes on. They're always out partying and drinking. Um, they're always doing something like that because they aren't happy. They're looking for, for ways to escape. And so when she told me this, I knew that it was all just a facade. It was all an illusion. And it broke my heart that I was actually somebody that would make her want to start throwing up her food to feel beautiful like me. Um, God started showing me that she wasn't the only girl that my images were doing that to. He started opening my eyes to the fact that the images that I had taken, being a supermodel, was really causing destruction in little girls' lives. It was causing high school girls, college girls, to fall into eating disorders because they were trying to live up to these images that I knew were unattainable. It was causing little, little girls, like my cousin, to feel this tremendous pressure to actually want to throw up her food so that she could feel beautiful because most of us just want to feel beautiful. And that's what I was doing. I was chasing after this a career just to feel beautiful. Well, what I found was I could never, ever feel beautiful chasing after this career, chasing after this worldly desire of mine. Uh, I could never feel beautiful or confident doing the things that I was doing and promoting that kind of message to young girls. Um, it just wasn't possible. And so God, uh, by his grace, thankfully opened up my eyes to the fact that I was just not being a good role model. I was not living my life to glorify him. I was living my life out of selfishness. I was living my life to find attention and glory and fame, and I was looking for it. Uh, I wasn't looking to glorify him in any way. Um, through Victoria's Secret, uh, as well as um, all the other lingerie modeling that I did, um, I had caused a lot of men to fall into temptation over the images that I took. Um, 
it breaks my heart to know that uh, I disrespected my husband um, so much by doing this. And it breaks my heart to all you moms out there um, that I was in images and that your husbands were subject to images like the ones that I took. It breaks my heart to know that possibly the things that I was doing could have led men into a porn addiction. It breaks my heart to know that the things that I was doing and promoting um, caused destruction in people's lives. But thankfully, uh, we have such a gracious and loving God. And thankfully, uh, he opened my eyes to all of these things because if it weren't for him, I would still be heading down that path. I would still be a bad role model to young girls. I would still be promoting um, the wrong message for girls about their bodies and about their self-image and self-worth. And I would still be disrespecting all of the wives in here who have husbands that they want to protect from the types of things that I used to do. And so I am just so, so gracious and so thankful um, that the Lord opened my eyes to these things um, and uh, that he forgave me for all of the things that I had done, um, that he put a new heart in me and changed my heart um, so that I could become the type of woman that he made me to be. Um, so I ended up giving up my career in modeling uh, after God changed my heart. Uh, and I talk in my book uh, about all the events that led up to that decision and exactly how it all played out. But all I can say is I am just so grateful to the Lord that he did that because um, I used to have such a wrong view of what beauty was. Uh, I was chasing after it in all the wrong places. Um, looking to my modeling to get it. Uh, I used to post photos on Facebook, um, self pics. You guys probably have all seen the duck lip stuff. Um, that was me <laughs> posting pictures of myself, trying to, trying to get a bunch of likes on Facebook because I thought that that would make me feel beautiful. Um, thankfully, God showed me that I will never feel beautiful by doing those things. I ended up deleting my Facebook. Um, I ended up leaving the modeling industry and uh, I ended up not looking for attention from other people. What God showed me is that the only way that I will truly feel beautiful and know that I am beautiful is if I look at the things that he looks at, which is our heart. God does not look at our outer appearance. He looks at the qualities of our hearts. And once I started seeing that in his word and started focusing on those qualities too and developing my inner qualities, once I started being more humble and being more kind and loving, and once I stopped focusing so much on my outer appearance and chasing fame and attention, um, getting attention from other guys, getting attention through Facebook. Uh, once I stopped comparing myself to all of the models and all of the images that I knew were fake and just an illusion, uh, it was then that I truly felt confident and truly felt beautiful. Um, so I stand here today um, with no fake eyelashes, no fake hair extensions, uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those things, but if you're doing it out of a heart that is trying to attain a false sense of beauty with those things, I believe it's a heart issue, and I used to have a heart issue um, with those sorts of things. I used to wear hair extensions and dress immodestly um, to get attention from other people, and God has really changed my heart about all those things. Um, I stand here today with no hair extensions, no spray tans, no eyelashes, fake eyelashes. 
um, and dressed completely different than I ever would have used to have dressed. And I can tell you, I feel way more confident today than I've ever felt in my entire life. And so, uh, and I owe it all to God because he has changed my heart and he has showed me what true beauty looks like. Um, I have changed so much and it's all because of him and I want to give all the glory to him. Uh, I used to strive after getting glory for myself um, and it's amazing because now that I don't want attention and, and glory and fame, um, he has me here writing a book and being on talk shows. Now that the glory is all for him um, and not for myself. It's really just amazing, um, and so all of the glory goes to him uh, for transforming my heart, um, and I'm just so thankful that he has now um, changed me so that I could strive to be a good role model to uh, girls like you everywhere, a good wife to my husband, um, and just somebody that lives to serve him uh, and glorify him. And uh, I just want to say that um, when I'm not focusing on my outer appearance, when I'm not looking to other people to get attention and for them to tell me that I'm beautiful, that's when I feel best about myself. And I can promise you that that's when you'll feel best about yourself too. When you're looking to glorify the Lord, put him first in your life, uh, when you're looking at the things that he looks at, which are your inner qualities, those are what is beautiful. Um, there's a lot of models that look beautiful on the outside, but I can tell you, spend two minutes with them and you're not gonna think they're beautiful. It's really all about what's in the heart. Um, that's what makes a woman truly beautiful and that is what God sees. And so now that I just focus on my inner qualities, uh, I dress more modestly. Um, I no longer, you know, dress to get attention. Uh, I'm truly happy now. Now that I'm not chasing after success, chasing after worldly passions, um, giving in to my sinful desire of, of just wanting that attention and fame, um, I'm truly happy now and truly confident and I really truly feel beautiful because I look to God for that acceptance. I look to Christ for that love um, and he loves us so much. Uh, he thinks we are all more valuable um, than rubies. We're all more precious than rubies and if you just saw yourself the way God does, um, you would just feel so much more confident. I can promise you that. Um, I just want to thank you all for being here. My 30 minutes is up <laughs> right on time. So um, the, at the end of my book, I have a 30-day devotional that focuses all on inner beauty. Um, and I believe that it would be really, really great for you girls, um, you know, if you are struggling with your body image issues or or self-esteem. Um, but I just want to thank you all so much for allowing me to share my heart with you. Um, if I could, I just want to thank everyone that brought me out um, and allowed me to come here and share my heart with these girls and moms. Um, I'm so grateful. Uh, if I could just close in prayer um, real quickly. Um, Father God, I just I come to you so thankful. Um, had it been a few years ago, uh, I wouldn't have even been able to share anything um, that would bring glory to you, Lord, to anybody um, in the way that I lived my life. But I'm so thankful that this is the place that you have for me, that I could just share my heart with these girls. Lord, I pray that um, you just touch these girls' lives. Um, 
with everything that I've been able to share, Lord. I pray that all the glory goes to you, Lord. Uh, I pray that you just show these girls that they are beautiful, they are treasured, they are loved. Um, you just love us so much, Lord, and we thank you so much for that. Um, I thank you so much, and I praise you for allowing me to be here. Um, I just, I find so much joy in this, Lord, and um, I thank you for each and every one of these beautiful women and girls in this building, and I just pray that you put your blessings over them and that you just just show them, Lord, how much you love each and every one of them and how precious they each are. Lord, I pray these things in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Wasn't that great? If you'll have a seat just for a minute. My name's Alexa Newman, and it is my privilege to kind of wrap all this up tonight. I was so moved by what Kylie said when she talked about all the different things that she chased after. She chased after beauty. She chased after fame. She, ta she chased after just looking for fame and fortune. And there's girls here tonight, and you're doing the same thing. You're chasing after those kind of, you're chasing after guys. You're chasing after clothes. You want to be sure that your clothes are just right, that your hair is just right. Maybe it's athletics. Maybe you want to be the best volleyball player. Maybe you want to chase after being the best cheerleader. I don't know what it is that you're chasing after, but did you hear what she said at the end? The thing that mattered most was when she began to chase after the Lord. When she began to chase after the things that matter. And that's being a role model in your school. That's being a good sister to your siblings. That's being just a good kid to your parents. But chasing after loving Jesus with all your heart because girls he loves you the best when my niece was and my nephew when they were babies I used to tell them all the time Aunt Lexa loves you the best but as they got older they understood that it wasn't Aunt Lexa that loved them the best it wasn't even their parents that loved them the best it was Jesus and girls, I want you to, and moms, I want you to understand that Jesus loved you so much that he said, you are so precious to me that I will allow the most precious person to me, my son Jesus, to come and leave the beauty of heaven and live on an earth that really didn't love him, that only a few people were chasing after him at the time. There were a lot of people being mean to him. But he loved you so much that he was willing to do that. And so tonight, we want to give you an opportunity. If you've never, never given your heart to Jesus and said, you know, my heart belongs to you first, Jesus, and I want to chase after you. I want to chase after what matters. I want to make a difference at my school. I want to make a difference at my church then we want to invite you to come forward. And there are probably girls, I know there are girls here, and you're Christians. You've asked Jesus into your heart, but you've been chasing after the wrong things, and you know that. And you want to be like Kylie, and you want to start chasing after Jesus, the one that matters. We want to invite you to come and just to pray down here. And I would ask my CPC ladies and Amy and Donna and other ladies that are here, if you've got girls here that you brought and you see them come forward, I would encourage you to come and just kneel with them and pray with them. So let's bow our heads. Father, thank you so much for this powerful message that we've heard. Such a clear, clear picture of your mercy, of your grace, and God, how you just drew Kylie to yourself. And God, how you completely changed the path of her life. 
and Father, how she was chasing after things that didn't really matter. And God, now she's running after you. And God, I just see you there with your open arms, just ready, how you just met her right where she was. And God, how you're walking with her now and how she's just walking, wanting to please you in everything that she does. And Lord, you give us that same opportunity now. And so God, I pray that in the quietness of this place, that you would move. God, that you would move on hearts and that you would speak to girls, even if they don't have the courage to walk down front and just to pray. God, that they would talk to somebody tonight or in the next few days. Lord, I pray that would happen tonight, that hearts would be changed, that lives would be changed, and God, that we would leave here with more life than we came with. We love you so much. We thank you especially for that precious gift of your son Jesus and our salvation through him. In Jesus' name, amen. If there's anybody that would like to come forward and just have somebody pray with you, we'd encourage you to do that now, and it'll be hard for the first one to step forward. But if you'll come forward, I promise you God will meet you right where you are. I want to recognize Chuck Wallington from Christian Supply, who's going to come and um, just be here, and he has a few words for us tonight. But I would ask some of my, the ladies that I called your name, if you would just come and kind of stand on the side, and then girls can come to you even while Chuck's talking. Thank you, Alexa. Thank you very much. Um, it is a privilege to be able to handle God's truth in a business that we have. And I don't want to cut short the moment. I know it's, um, everybody's ready to kind of get up and move around a little bit, but I don't want to cut sh short the moment at all. And I have a feeling that there's some young ladies and maybe some moms that just need to come down here and pray with somebody. So we're going to give you just a minute to do that. So if you need to do that, take just a minute now, come forward. I don't want to be talking over that. So, so you get up and come if God's laid something on your heart to be prayed about. Maybe it's a matter of sexual purity. Maybe it's a matter of just changing your heart about priorities. I don't know what it is for you. But we're just going to wait for just a minute for you. And uh, if God lays it on your heart, then you come forward. Thanks. shines over everyone we look to you we long for you oh lord oh our lord oh our lord how majestic is your name in all the That's right. 
Thank you so much for allowing us those few minutes just for the Lord to work in some people's hearts. Um, I want to thank a couple of people. My name is Chuck Wallington. I'm with Christian Supply. And it was our privilege tonight to host Kylie along with our friends from First Baptist here. And, and we had some other friends that came and helped us. They're out on the concourse. They're going to be open for a few minutes uh, after we finish as well. If you want to visit their exhibits and all, let me just take a moment and thank our, our vendor partners for tonight. Uh, Oops, um, over on uh, uh, East Main Street, almost pink, two doors down. Three Sisters, uh, Genealogy and Ivy Row, uh, Crafts by Katie, uh, Palmetta on Point, Lemon Peel, and I'd be real remiss if I didn't single out especially Bell Magazine, Amanda Bass. Uh, Amanda put together a fashion show for us and uh, was so helpful in so many ways, and uh, we appreciate so much the support of Bell Magazine in this. Also, CPC, uh, Carolina Pregnancy, Pregnancy Center, and Alexa Newman. What an incredible um, ministry they have and what an incredible support they've been in this. We appreciate them so very much. Just a reminder, as you leave uh, tonight, and then Seth's going to come in just a second and do a closing prayer for us. But as you leave tonight, we're going to ask you to go out these doors. The doors at the back will not be open for, for access uh, to leave. There's actually a queue line set up there to meet uh, Kylie. So as you leave tonight, there's, uh, Kylie's book is available out in the lobby. Uh, we have it straight as you walk out the doors, and then she'll be upstairs signing that. She'll be happy to pose for pictures with you as well, along with uh, Allie Rogers and uh, Sydney Sill. will also be up there. There's some signage to direct you to where each one will be. And uh, they'll be here as long as you want to take pictures and, and, and buy books. Uh, the book, by the way, is $16 tonight. It's normally $19.95. It's $16 tonight. Uh, moms, I'll tell you that you probably have uh, some gals that you're getting graduation invitations from and all. This makes a great graduation gift. Kylie will be glad to personalize it for you. Uh, a personalized book is a great gift, and um, they're available out in the lobby. Uh, and then I want to thank especially Allie Rogers and, and Sydney Sill for being here tonight. Uh, Allie got up at 3.30 this morning and has been traveling our state since 3.30 this morning. She didn't look like it, did she? She looked great, and uh, we appreciate so much her and Sydney uh, being here tonight to help us. And uh, then, of course, we're so grateful to Kylie for being here, too. Let's give them all a round of applause. And then lastly, I just want to thank uh, Seth Buckley, Kristen um, Butler, and his staff, Britt Dillard, Michelle uh, Brady from the media staff that's here tonight uh, helping us run cameras and all. We did make a DVD of tonight. It'll be available next week. You can contact the church if you're interested in getting a DVD of tonight. And, of course, Kylie's book is outside. Uh, Seth, come and uh, close us in a word of prayer, if you will. Thank you, Chuck. If I could, be so bold to ask everyone to stand and just remain standing and with no moving around, please. Because I want us just to share this as, I, as we close tonight. Number one, thank you for being here. A word to uh, parents who are here. I pray that tonight there's a discussion that will begin that changes the course of direction in your home. And I know that there's a lot of things that were stirred up tonight in your heart. Uh, maybe expectations that as moms uh, you have that maybe tonight you're beginning to think through some things differently. I don't know. But allow God to use tonight's discussion on the way home or this weekend for a miracle to take place at home so that your home will never look the same again. That your daughter or your granddaughter or your niece who you're here with won't even look at you the same because they feel that sense of support and helping them to become that precious young lady in God's eyes that he's created them to be. And youth workers who crammed as many girls in the van that you could get, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for those late discussions that you have with those girls in your groups from all over the upstate, wherever you've come from. Thank you for your investment in the lives of teenage girls because it matters. And let's pray and ask God's blessing on what has taken place here tonight and for these to be seeds that have been planted and that we would see the fruition of this in years to come. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for your presence here with us tonight. Lord, our hearts have been stirred at the authenticity 
and just the raw truth of the darkness that is in the world. But Father, the light that you brought to us through Jesus. Father, you came to set us free. And there are many here tonight, Lord, who for the very first time have caught a glimpse of what it means to be set free from the bondage of self-image. Lord, I pray that we would see ourselves through your eyes, that we would fall on our faces before you, thanking you for your son Jesus, who came to set us free so that we could live in freedom with purpose and meaning and joy. Bless the fellowship that is about to take place and for the discussion that will happen tonight and this weekend. And Lord, we're excited to see the results of what has started here tonight. We pray all of this in the strong and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Oh, my tears, oh, my son.